So you're about to build a new Copilot agent. You're going to do this no code because you don't want all the complexity. You don't want all the, the extra stuff. You just need something simple to do something good. But which one are you going to choose? You've got SharePoint agents on one hand. You've got Copilot Studio Lite, what used to be Copilot Studio Agent Builder, on, on, the, on the other side. Which one do you go with? How do you how do you make the right decisions so that you don't have to recreate this thing in another in another way later on down the road? Well, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to go through some big questions you want to ask yourself to lead you to the right tool. Let's get into it. First up, where are you going to be pulling your data from? Does this use data? If you're using data, where is that stored? Is it in SharePoint and only in SharePoint? Maybe you're trying to create an agent to help out with a project, and you want to be able to summarize project files and, and uh, SOWs, all, things like that, and you want to, you want to have an agent that, that helps that out. But maybe, think about this, do you also have a Teams channel for that project? Do you have things, do you have, chats? Do you have posts in the channel? Do you have data that, that is not just in SharePoint, but also potentially in Teams? Or maybe you've got data in Outlook as well, because the project members have been communicating through email on a lot of things. So before you create a SharePoint agent, you need to be asking, where does all the data really live? And for that, you want to take a further step back and say, what is actually the role of this agent? Is it just to summarize documents in SharePoint? Is this to summarize information about the entire project, wherever that data might live? If it's just in SharePoint and you're sure of that, then you want a SharePoint agent for that, definitely. But if you've got other data, if you've got Perhaps, perhaps some Outlook messages, some, a Teams channel, some maybe one-on-one -on -one chats. If you've got some of that stuff, then you should be looking at Copilot Studio Lite. But especially if that agent needs access to external data. And I, I hear what you're saying, Steve. What do you mean external data? Well, you may have Copilot connectors deployed where you are pulling in data from an outside source. Make, maybe it's ServiceNow. Maybe it is uh, Atlassian's Confluence. Maybe it's a public website. Maybe it's a client website. But in essence, these Copilot connectors, what you might have heard before, before previously as a graph connector, they're designed to pull data from outside side of M365, that's where the external part comes in, pull it into Microsoft Graph where Copilot can access that data. So going back to the project agent example, you may have a, a task tracker that's stored outside of M365. And you could have a connector that's designed to pull all of that information into M365. And then your agent could also be grounded on that information as well. That's a really good uh, use case for a Copilot connector. And if you need that connector access, then you need to be using Copilot Studio Lite, not SharePoint. Because SharePoint is just SharePoint data. It does some, some particular things really well over Copilot Studio Lite, but when, you, when it comes to accessing data other than SharePoint, you have to go with Copilot Studio Lite, given the choice between those two anyway. Another one that is not really obvious, um, it's, it's, there's very few references and documentation about this, but if you're grounding on SharePoint and you want to be able to ground on a hub site, and all of the associated sites that are underneath it, you know, connected to it in that hub and spoke thing. So classic intranet example, basically. A, you, you want to ground on the entire intranet and all the associated sites. If that's what you want to do, then you should be looking more at SharePoint agents, to be honest. It gets a little bit nuanced, but a SharePoint agent is currently the only agent that can ground on a hub site and automatically get grounded on all the associated sites. Every other way to create agents, Copilot Studio Lite, Copilot Studio, uh, other without getting into pro code anyway, but those other no-code, low-code methods, will, you would have to add every single associated site to the agent, and then you could put, you could easily run into an issue where there's too many sites than than the agent can support. So, like in the SharePoint example, 
20 is kind of the magic number. If you had more than 20 sites in your intranet, you would not be able to ground on the entire thing. But SharePoint agents do have that magic ability to ground on the entire intranet or any other hub site and autom automatically get those associated sites. Copilot Studio Lite, you, if you go that route, you will have to add in every single site in that hub network and hope that you don't run out of data sources. And if another site gets added, you would have to manually update that agent. So if you need that hub grounding uh, behavior, you should be looking more at SharePoint agents. Now, while we're here talking about these no-code agents, I've got an upcoming workshop I wanted to mention that I'm delivering live to all the students who enroll in this thing. There's a link in the description below, but this is going to go through SharePoint and uh, SharePoint Agents and Copilot Studio Lite. We're going to be talking about how to properly design these things, how to create instructions, all the little things uh, that, that go kind of go along with doing things the right way to set you up for success. We've got a ton of examples we're going to be covering as well. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description below, and I hope to see you in there. Now let's talk about the user experience. And this is usually an afterthought, I'll admit, with a lot of people. They want to design the agent first, and then they think about, how does the user expect to be able to access this agent? Do they want to go into Teams all the time? You know, what what is their experience? So let's take that into account. If a user is going to be looking at SharePoint and they would they want to access their agent in SharePoint. Well, a SharePoint agent's the only way you can go. Uh, well, before you start hit me in the comments, that's choosing between SharePoint agents and Copilot Studio Lite. I know Copilot Studio can deploy to SharePoint and it looks like a SharePoint agent. We're, we're not covering Copilot Studio in this video. I'm I'm going to be covering that in a future one though. But Copilot Studio Lite over on this side cannot, like when you deploy an agent, it's available in Teams and it's available at M365 Copilot, like the Copilot app inside Teams, on the web. It, it's available there. It's not available in SharePoint. Those are very, very different experiences. Does the user want to easily access this all the time from Teams. If so, Copilot Studio Lite has the uh, the advantage there. But if they want it in SharePoint and they want an easy method to get to it, SharePoint agents have the edge there. Now let's talk about what happens when this agent needs to be upgraded. Because with proper adoption, users are are going to be using this, and they're going to be using it a lot. They're going to be requesting additions, you know, enhancements to this agent. So what does the path to upgrade this agent look like? Well, on the SharePoint side, you start out with that simple file-based agent, that, that file you've got to stick somewhere usually in, in, in a site, or usually the site, ad, the site owner would need to approve it to kind of move it into a site assets, the site assets library. But what happens if you outgrow the needs uh, or the, 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 the features of that SharePoint agent. What do you do then? Well, you can easily upgrade up to Copilot Studio. And there is a button on the agent that says, you know, customize in Copilot Studio. That, that That's an advanced feature that's not, it still says it's coming soon as of the time of, of recording this. That's not available. But what I know I said that you can, publish it from Copilot Studio. You just, but in this case, you have to start in Copilot Studio. You can't take the agent and re and have it automatically move into Copilot Studio. That part is still not available yet. But you would, what you would do in this case is you would have to recreate it inside Copilot Studio, copy over your instructions, your data sources, all that stuff gets moved into Copilot Studio. And then you would publish it to the SharePoint channel, which drops it back on that site, actually drops a file on that site. So it looks like a SharePoint agent. It's just that that file is has a has a URL that points back to the chat the the chat interface of the Copilot Studio agent. That's kind of how that behavior works. So you would have to recreate it. Uh, the uh, long term, you would not have to recreate it. That button eventually will work, and it will carry over all of your stuff into Copilot Studio. Now let's talk about Copilot Studio Lite. Now both of these agents are 
extremely similar. In fact, they're both called declarative agents behind the scenes. That's that's the the, the proper name for that lightweight style agent. So SharePoint agents and Copal Studio Lite are both declarative agents. The the path to upgrade there. It basically is the same thing. Like if you need more functionality than just, you know, Teams, Outlook, uh, SharePoint data, external connectors. If you need start to need custom logic, if you need it to trigger actions in other applications, maybe trigger flows, then you have to go to Copilot Studio and it, it would be a similar process. So this isn't so much a choice that you would have to make or ask yourself. It would it's more of a uh, the more you know kind of thing. If you outgrow the Copilot Studio Lite, then you have to copy over the instructions, the the knowledge sources, the starter prompts, all that stuff just has to get recreated in Copilot Studio, and then you would publish using the Teams and M365 Copilot channel. They're kind of like lumped in there together. I'm not sure why, but that's where you would uh, do that to make another agent that's now Copal Studio sit side by side with your old Copal Studio Lite agent. And at that point, you just delete the old agent and you're up and running within Copal Studio now with all the bells and whistles that it comes with. Now, these agents are incredibly powerful uh, to, to access data, to summarize things, to compare, to take action, to generate workbooks on, on Excel spreadsheets, combining data, doing powerful analysis. But how are you protecting that data? That leads us to this video's sponsor. Today, many organizations rely on Microsoft 365 for everything from email, collaboration, conferencing, and calendars, to documents, internal communications. Yet, this critical data can be lost as easily as as it's created. Threats like cyber attacks, retention gaps, or even a simple delete click can leave data inaccessible and cause costly downtime. Nakivo Backup and Replication seamlessly bridges this gap to ensure your Microsoft 365 data and Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online, and Microsoft Teams is backed up and easily recoverable. You can send Microsoft 365 backups and backup copies anywhere, local folders, cloud platforms, NFS and SMB shares, tape media, and duplication appliances. The solution offers advanced ransomware protection features that include backup encryption and immutability. Microsoft 365 data loss does not need to happen. With Nakivo backup and replication, you can ensure maximum protection of Microsoft 365 data. Make sure to check out Nakivo in the link in the description below for a free 15-day trial. Now let's talk about publishing, the, the, the way you make an agent available to other users. It's, it's wildly different in this case. SharePoint agents, you may have seen them, they're just files. They are just files. There's no real publishing you can do. The only thing that you can really do after you create an agent is a site owner can make that an approved agent so that on the right-hand side of the of the SharePoint interface, you, when you hit the Copilot button, it will appear there uh, in that list with a check mark. Uh, and if it's not an approved agent, it just won't have the check mark. That's kind of about it. You could set it as a default agent, the site owner can anyway, so that it's the the first one that comes up when someone hits that co that SharePoint agent's button. But outside of Outside of that, there's really no publishing. You, if if someone does, wants access to the agent and they don't have that link, you have to send them the link to the agent or tell them, "Hey, go go to the SharePoint site and look for this agent." That's that's kind of it. It's it's a very informal, a very casual type of experience, you know, sharing wise and stuff. Now let's contrast that with Copilot Studio Lite, and and a lot of people don't didn't don't really know that this exists they haven't noticed this feature yet but with copilot studio lite sure you could do the same thing you just you create your agent you get the sharing link you send it to people like that that's it like you know you shoot them a message shoot them an email here's the link to my agent um and and that's kind of it but you do have a publishing avenue with copilot studio lite here's how that works so once your agent is done, there is an option on the top right corner, I believe, where you can download a zip file. And that's the zip file that contains your agent. Now, what you would do with it at that point is you would give it to a Teams administrator. Or if that's you, you take that file, you upload it into the Teams app store. 
Now this agent is an app inside Teams. It's available to everyone, uh, and they can find it in the apps, uh, the apps store as well. So they can now find that themselves because it's published as an agent, just like any other application would be in Teams. So there's a formal process there that that's actually very similar to Copilot Studio as well. Uh, although you don't have to download the zip file, like it's a little bit more automated there. The number one question you want to ask yourself with designing a, a no-code agent, we either using SharePoint or Copilot Studio Lite, is what is the long-term vision for this agent? A lot of people will start out with something really small, really basic, basically a proof of concept. And then they just go to production with the proof of concept. They don't think about what is going to be the future of this agent. What is the what is the vision for this? Is this intended to access Teams messages later down the road? Is it supposed to be accessing a Copilot connector down the road? And because a lot of people don't think about that, what they usually end up doing is they have to recreate the agent at some point. And then they have to resend out the links or they have to publish it in the app store and then tell people, here's a new way to access that and stop using this old one. And it just kind of like disrupts the, the user's flow with, it, with this agent and, and becomes kind of a pain point with, with having to just switch the agent you're, you're now using. So I want you to think about what is when you're designing any agent, where is this going? What is this supposed to do? And starting on the you starting using the tool that can support that down the road. If that's Copilot Studio, that's fine. If it's Copilot Studio Lite, that's fine. But the point is, if you start using the features that you know you will likely need down the road, it means you don't have to start from scratch again. You don't have to recreate anything. All you do is continue to add functionality when you get to that point down the road. Keeps life very, very simple and keeps you looking like a rock star. If you've made it this far, please smack that like button and subscribe to this channel. And to see more cool videos and some walkthroughs that I've done about Copilot Agents, just click or tap the screen and I'll see you over there.